Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kristen, and um, I am thrilled to be with you guys here tonight to share some summer entertaining ideas with you guys. Um, I have Brenda joining me live um, with, with the video, um, but this is being recorded, and I know some of you guys will be watching it in replay mode. Um, so Brenda, <laughs> since you're online with me um, live, if you have questions or comments, please just spit them right out as we're going through. Don't worry about interrupting me. It is a-okay. Um, and for those of you that are watching on replay, um, just if you have any comments or questions or whatever, just you know, pop something into the comments where this is posted um, or re reach out to me with any questions or whatever. And I'm more than happy to kind of go into a little bit more detail or share more information. So anyway, so uh, just uh, Brenda knows me well, but for those of you that are watching the video, those of you that don't know me so well, um, as I said, my name is Kristen. The last name is Kinchin. It sounds just like Kitchen. Um, and I always say with the last name like that, what am I supposed to do but sell kitchen tools? So um, here I am. I have been a Pamper Chef consultant for 23 years. Um, never um, in my wildest dreams did I think I'd be doing this for 23 years. Um, I joined because at the time the apple peeler core slicer was in the starter kit and I wanted it and I was too cheap to buy it. But with that and everything else that was in the kit, I was like, no, that's a good deal. So um, I bought the starter kit. Um, I had a friend have my first party. She told me that if I signed up, she'd have the party. So I was like, what the heck? I got at least one party on the calendar. <laughs> um, and the rest is history. I've always said, as long as I have dates on my calendar, I will continue doing this. So um, Brenda has been a wonderful host for for, mine, for me over the years. And I'm sure some of you guys that are watching um, have been wonderful hosts of mine as well. So um, anyway, so with tonight's uh, demo, um, you're, this is a chance for you guys to learn some new recipes, for you to see some Pampered Chef tools in action. Um, and it's kind of like um, Test Kitchen, or I say Test Kitchen, like kind of like a Food Network Live, um, except it's me as opposed to like some fancy uh, TV star. So what we're going to do tonight is I am going to show you how quick and easy you can put together a snack tray, whether you need need to take something to a potluck or you um you know are you know at the lake and you want to take something you know outside to sit on the patio or you're at the pool or whatever or I find too when my kids were home and it's even for me too um if you can get like a little tray of goodies put together so you have veggies or fruit cut up and maybe with a dip or whatever and have that in the refrigerator everybody's more likely to eat the healthier snacks because what do you do when you're hungry and you need a snack you go for whatever is easiest and if there's you know, we all know you should be eating vegetables or fruit or whatever, but if you have to go to the trouble of peeling the carrots and slicing it up and making the dip and whatever, we're not going to do that. You're going to go grab the bag of potato chips, right? So um, I find that if you can have this done ahead, have it in your refrigerator, and then that way it's handy when you open the door, everything's there, you can just grab it and eat it. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. And also to um, I'm a proponent of make it yourself, fresh is best. I know you can buy veggie trays and fruit trays at the store, but they just never have the right taste to me. They have preservatives or something in them so that everything lasts longer. You never know how long ago those vegetables were prepped. And so for me, I just like, I don't even want to go there. So um, fresh is best. So we are going to be using tonight um, our cool and serve tray. So Brenda, do you have any of the cool and serve collection? I do. Okay. And I have this particular tray. I have, I think I have that one. I have one that's green on the bottom. Right. I was saying they changed the color of this because a lot of people are like, well, I don't like the green. I like, I want to, you know, I want something more neutral. So that's what oh, the green is. I so liked the these green. Cool and serve trays. Let me just kind of move my cutting board here and adjust the camera a little bit so you can see. So our cool and serve collection, um, we have a number of different pieces, but what's really cool about them is that they all have this little uh, I, they call it like a puck, an ice puck or whatever, kind of an ice pack that I just keep these in my freezer so that whenever I'm ready to use my cool and serves, they're ready to go. So these do need to be frozen before you use them. But when you do use them in your trays, they will keep your food cold for four to six hours. And I don't know, Brenda, if you've had any experience or stories you want to share, but I know for a fact, I've had deviled eggs in my tray for like setting out like all afternoon during a party and you know, there's one left at the end of the night and I go ahead and get ready to throw it away thinking it's going to be, you know, bad because it's been sitting out too long and it's still cold. And so I pop it in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, no, so perfect. Brenda, do you have any, share, any stories to share? Yeah, I like it. I, I really like it. And it's so, so handy. 
Yeah. So this particular, this is the large tray. What I like about it is, is that you can use it for deviled eggs as we're going to see tonight, or so it comes with the two pucks. So you can do both of these all as deviled eggs. So you can do 24 deviled eggs, or you can use it with these inserts that come with it. And then with the inserts, you can put dips, vegetables, fruit, chips, you know, whatever in here, however you want to con, um, configure it. But what we're going to do tonight is kind of half and half. We're going to do a couple of deviled eggs, and we're going to do some veggies and dip in the other side. Um, so that is the large tray. Um, it does come with a lid. So when you're getting ready, you know, either storing it in your refrigerator or you're on the go, whatever, that lid will snap on there. It makes it easy to take with you to potlucks or whatever. And then when you are at that potluck, the lid goes right underneath. So it's easy to keep everything together for you. Um, so there is also a smaller tray. The small tray does not have the deviled egg indentations as you see here, but it is kind of a smaller version of this. And then we also have um, some cool and serve bowls as well. This is the small one quart bowl. So this is kind of your, your dip bowl. And then we have a two quart bowl, which would be more for like salads or whatever, but you'd put your ice pack in the bottom and then it's got this clear bolt. So that's where your food's going to go. And of course it has a lid, so it makes it easy to store and transport. And then we also have a nine by 13 tray, which is great for layered salads, a charcuterie board, sandwiches, any of those types of things. So no inserts, it's just the, just the flat board. So with today, I'm going to share with you guys my uh, deviled egg recipe. This is not a Pampered Chef recipe. Usually I'm doing Pampered Chef recipes, but um, I am known for my deviled eggs. And so lucky you, you get to um, get myself <laughs> better organized here. Um, you get to learn my recipe. It actually came from Southern Living. So I don't know if you guys are um, familiar with Southern Living, but mm -hmm. I love those recipes as much as I do Pampered Chef. So a lot of uh, what I do is from that. So let me turn the camera down just again a little bit here. And um, just to make things fancy, I like to cut my eggs in half with this crinkle cutter. And this is really handy for a lot of things in the summer. Like if you wanted to slice up um, cucumbers, I'm going to do cucumbers today, but with uh, the rapid prep mandolin, but slicing cucumbers with this, you get the little ridges. I remember my grandma had one of these. Um, oops, before I even do the eggs, I've got to do something first. Um, my grandma had a crinkle cutter and she always cut the carrots. And so we'd have crinkle cut carrots on our relish tray or whatever. So um, just a fun tool. Um, I've also seen where um, I haven't done it because my kids are too big for this, but um, people that have little kiddos, they'll take their um, block of cheese and they'll crinkle cut it into strips. So like instead of buying the cheese, you know, in the package and, you know, all the expense and again, the preservatives and everything, take your block of cheese, slice it with your crinkle cutter. You're going to get little crinkly cheese. Your kids are going to love it and have fun with it. And it's a whole lot healthier and fresher. So, okay. So back to my deviled eggs. Um, I started to cut them, but I forgot. The first step for me is um, my deviled eggs. These are called Tex-Mex deviled eggs. And so they have green onion, jalapeno and cilantro in them. So they're very, they're spicier and they're savory more so than a sweet deviled egg. And so what I do is I put those, those, those three ingredients I just mentioned in my manual food processor and I chop those up first. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do that. The manual food processor, it has a blade in here, as you can see here. Um, and then when you pump the handle, it pumps, it chops up whatever you've got in there. And we want to chop these fairly fine so that it will go through the, the um, food, the Easy Accent Decorator, which is what I'm gonna use. Oh, that pepper in there is spicy. It's about to make me cough. Okay, so I've got my veggies mixed up here with this. And then what I do is as I cut my eggs in half here with my crinkle cutter, but look at how pretty they are. I don't know if you can see the little ridges on there. So it just kind of makes them a little fancier. I'm going to put my yolks inside my manual food processor. So the manual food processor, you can use it for, um, you can slice up, you know, just onions or peppers or whatever, um, single ingredients, but I like it for multiple ingredients. So like if I'm going to make um, as I'm doing here, I have to, you know, chop up some onions and then, you know, add the egg yolk and whatever. Um, you can also, um, it's great for salsa. Same thing. I start with my harder vegetables. So I would slice up my, um, I'd slice up like my onions and my peppers first and then add tomatoes. And it's a great little salsa maker, guacamole maker. Brenda, do you have it? I think as much as you have from Pamper Chef. Yeah, I, I, I have that. Yes. What are some things you like to cut with it? 
or chop up with it? Well, onions. Um, and you don't cry. That's the best yeah, part. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, because I'm, when it comes to onions, I'm, <laughs> I tear up right away. Yep. And the nice thing is, is that you can chop them as coarsely or finely as you want. So if you like mm -hmm. onions, you know, you can leave them kind of big. If you need to hide onions from a family member, like if they see them, they're like, oh, I'm not going <laughs> to keep that. Um, you can chop them really, really fine. Um, you know, kind of almost pulverize them so that um, that people won't see them. Okay, almost have these ready. Of course, the eggs are sticking to my crinkle cutter. Of course. Of course, <laughs> but that's okay. Let me get a towel real quick. There we go. Okay, so got my yolks in there. We're gonna go ahead and give this a little bit of a chop and then we're gonna add our mayonnaise and mustard. Okay, got that nicely chopped. And we're gonna go ahead and add some salt. Let me see how much I'm doing. Half a teaspoon of salt. Love these little adjustable measuring spoons. You get two in a set. Uh, the small one goes from an eighth of a teaspoon to a teaspoon. The large one's a teaspoon to a tablespoon. And you just adjust this to, I don't know if you can see there's measurements on there. So like whatever measurements you need. So in this case, I need the half a teaspoon. Move it to that measurement, add my salt. And it's really nice to have an eighth now and yes. then. Right. And I know some people are not measurers. They're just going to you know, like throw that in, you know, just kind of, yeah. yes, but I'm a measurer. Well, so. I don't always measure, but for some things you really have to. Yeah. I say more baking than anything. So, okay. Yeah. And then we're going to add some mayonnaise. This is the petite measure all cup. You guys might, so this goes up to a quarter of a cup. Uh, some of you guys might be familiar with, I have them right here. The, um, the one cup measure all cup. And then we also have, this is what's nice in my kitchen. I have everything handy. And then the two cup measure all cup, measure all cup. And what's nice about these is when you're doing something messy, like we got mayonnaise here, you just push this bottom and it ejects it right into whatever you are making. And all of it's gonna go in there. So messy things, peanut butter, honey, molasses, um, any of those things are really good with this. And so you just push this down to, whatever measurements you need. So like I needed the, the quarter cup, eject it out. But if you need liquids, you just flip it over and then you use it like a tradi traditional measuring cup and like you pour your liquid in there and you would just watch, you know, to whatever measurements you need, however many tablespoons, cups, whatever, and then pour that in. So super handy little tool. And I love it for like this, uh, this little petite guy is unfortunately, I love it, but it's being discontinued. So if you've ever thought about getting it and just like, oh, I'll get it next time. Now's the time to get it because it is now available while supplies last. And when it's gone, it's gone forever. Huh. Um, but what I like is, so like for this particular recipe, I need just a teaspoon of, um, and again, it even does little measurements. I'm doing a teaspoon of mustard with this. Um, and again, the thing is, is if you do um, measuring spoons, you know, you get it in the measuring spoon, but then you can't get it out of the measuring spoon. But again, <laughs> with this, it's going to go ahead and eject. So I'm doing a teaspoon of mustard. So even this guy does teeny tiny little measurements like we're doing here. So there's my teaspoon and put that in here. And again, we're gonna eject it out. I got mayonnaise on here. So now it's all slippery in my hand. <laughs> okay, the joy of being live with you guys. Paper towel. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and mix this up the rest of the way. Now you could use this, like, like again, this is my recipe, but if you do um, more of a sweet, um, like with pickle relish and mustard and mayonnaise, whatever, same thing, you can still go through, use these same tools for making your deviled eggs. Doesn't matter what you put in them. And with just a couple of pumps, you can see how all that is nicely mixed. I'm gonna mix just a little bit more. And then to really make these fancy, we're going to go ahead and pipe the egg mixture with this easy accent decorator. So I'm going to have these like really fancy, look like something you got <laughs> at the store, deviled eggs. But they're not. Look at how easy they are. So, and so we're going to take our blade. So the bowl and the blade of the manual food processor go in the dishwasher. The lid does not. So you, I just kind of take a soapy dishcloth, wet dishcloth, and just wipe that off. My dish is out of the way. 
Now the easy accent decorator, this comes with, I'm going to use this, this large hole um, star tip um, so that kind of the chunky things in here will pass through, but it comes with all these other tips. So you can get, I guess you can't see it from that. It has a smaller star tip. It has this Bismarck tip. So like if you do like stuffed um, donut, like a filled donut or whatever, or you want to stuff a uh, manicotti or shells or things like that, you can do it with this. It has just a plain, what I call the writing tip. So you can even put icing in here and do like kind of rudimentary cake decorating, you know, do a happy birthday or whatever. It has another different star tip. And, and then this guy too. So you can do not fancy cake decorating. I mean, if you're taking the Wilton classes and you learn how to use the bags and everything, um, this is too simple for you. But if you're like me who doesn't do cake decorating, but you want to do something simple, like, you know, a couple stars or, a, you know, a little bit of a design or a happy birthday, you know, message or something, you can do that with the easy accent decorator. So um, it is for rudimentary cake decorating. I like to put sour cream in mine and then it makes it easy to put sour cream on tacos and things like that. Um, but really the thing I use it for the most is my deviled eggs because it just makes it fun. Because again, it's kind of hard to fill deviled eggs, right? It I don't know is. You, yeah, like, I don't know, you can <laughs> yeah, use a spoon, you can use a scoop, I don't know. But when you guys see how easy it is this way, you'll be like, oh, I am never doing it any other way. Okay. So put this on there. Okay, of course, now that you're watching me, not going together as easily. <laughs> I guess usually I fill from the other end. Okay, and then this has this little thumb thing here. So when you push that, that is what is going to eject our mix. So let me pull the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Bring my eggs over here and, and you just do your little, but aren't they pretty? Look at how nice that is. looks so easy. I know, and that's exactly it. They just, this, this is so effortless. And that's it. Like, you know, a lot of times, you know, like a lot of people love deviled eggs, but you think about how difficult they are to make. You're like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to go to that much trouble. There's no trouble whatsoever. You can just see it's really fun to do. So, so there, all of that's out of there. All of that oh, is perfect. my deviled eggs, right? Aren't they pretty? Yeah. And, and then most deviled eggs have paprika on top, but to go with my Tex-Mex theme, I'm putting some chili powder on top. So we're going to sprinkle a little chili powder. These are so good. Like I said, I'm, I'm known for these deviled eggs. If, you know, my friends and family, if they have potlucks or whatever, it's like, are you bringing deviled eggs? <laughs> there we go. And then I like to finish it off with just a little bit of cheddar cheese on top. And I like to do really, really fine because again, these eggs, you don't want like a big piece of cheese. You want it to be fairly fine. So I'm going to use our zester. So this is meant for zesting fruit. Um, but you can also use it for Parmesan and harder cheeses. So you can see it's a fine grate, but it also is going to do a really fine grate with the cheese. So I'm just going to kind of just a couple little scrapes on there. Can you guys see what it's yeah. doing? So like I said, I normally would use our normal, the coarse grater for cheddar cheese, but for these eggs, I want just, you know, I want it to be a finer grate. So that's why I'm using this. Okay. Beauty, right? Yeah, that's Brenda, you're gonna have to come over idea. and help me eat these eggs. <laughs> okay, so there's our deviled egg. Now, again, if I was doing this for a party, I would probably have the whole tray deviled eggs, but uh, for tonight, I'm just kind of cooking for two. So that's what you get. Um, and let me go ahead and make some room here. And then we're gonna go ahead and fill the rest of this tray with some goodies. And we're gonna make a dip real quick with, and again, I'm just making a very small version of this dip, but I've got about a quarter cup mayonnaise in our prep bowl. And we have a number of different mixes in our pantry line. I don't know, Brenda, if you've tried any of these. Um, we have a green goddess, which is brand new. You might have tried this at my open house because I think I, I had- I did, yes, it was really good. Bag. Really good herby um, kind of, uh, you can use it as a dip. You can make a dressing with it. Um, we also have um, a garden vegetable. I like this mixed with cream cheese, but you could do your mayonnaise or sour cream or whatever as a dip, but I like to mix it with cream cheese and then spread it on a bagel or something like that. Um, we also have French onion dip. That's what I'm going to make tonight with mine. Mm -hmm. 
And um, actually I said, I said mayonnaise, I actually have sour cream in here. I like to do sour cream with the French onion. Cause it's like that French onion dip you buy at the store, but <laughs> fresher and better. Sounds when you good. Yes. Yourself. And then um, we also have a guacamole mix that makes it really easy to make a guacamole. Mm. So like one avocado with a tablespoon of the mix and you're good to go. So, so what's nice about these is, okay, I know you can buy French onion dip at the grocery store. It's easy just to pop the lid and start eating. But again, who knows what preservatives are in it. And what I like is I'm cooking for two right now. So it's, you know, empty nest time. I don't need that big tub of dip unless I'm having a big party. If it's just like my husband and I, I just want like a quarter of a cup so I can make exactly what I want. I don't have to, you know, and it's going to be fresh. I can eat it. It can be gone and it's not going to be sitting around in my refrigerator calling my name, potato chips and French <laughs> onion dip, right? Like my yeah. neighbor. So, so it's a tablespoon of the dip mix for a cup of whatever you want to do, mayonnaise, sour cream, um, cream cheese, whatever. So I did just a teaspoon because of the smaller amount. Um, Brenda, I know you have these prep bowls, right? I do. Yeah, these are handy for everything. So like you can just mix little bits in there. Can't see it from the camera so much, but there are measure markings on here. So you can use it as a kind of a rough measure. They come with lids, so they're great for storing. So if I wasn't putting this into this tray, I might just make my dip in here. And then if it was left over, I'd just put a lid on top. So but yeah, I think I have two of those in the fridge right now. I use them all the time. I do too. Like you they're have different like things. it's leftovers or what have you, but they go in the oven. I mean, sorry, you can put them in the oven, the microwave. Um, you can do really a lot of different things with them and they're dishwasher safe. So this is the and one use, size. Yeah. I use that little scraper too all the oh, time. Yeah. Yes. yeah. This little, this is the, the little scoopy ones are called the, yes. the um, mix and scraper. So this is the mini one, which if you're doing a little bowl, this is the perfect size. If you're doing something bigger, we have um, bigger ones to go with it as well. So, and they're uh, the favorites of Pampered Chef. They are um, stain resistant, heat resistant. You know, they don't melt. They're just, they're just pretty awesome. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and get some vegetables ready for our tray. And we're going to use the rapid prep mandolin. And this is fairly new. So Brenda, I don't know if you've gotten this yet, or did you just order it? I forget. I just ordered it. Okay. And I'm anxious to try it. For you to get it. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, this has, just so you can see how to use it. Um, on the back, there are these two dials. And between the two dials, it gives you 24 different settings. And I always say that's really overkill. You don't need that much, but you have it at your fingertips. And so what you do is, and again, I don't know if you can see from the camera, this little circle here has just like a line through the middle. So that's your slicing blade. So if you want to slice something, like we're going to slice cucumbers tonight, you turn it to slice. And then on the bottom dial, you can dial from one to eight. So one millimeter all the way to eight millimeters. So shaved all the way to about a quarter of an inch and everything in between. And it will slice soft tomatoes all the way up to hard sweet potatoes. And again, and everything that's amazing. Between, so fruit, vegetables, things like that. Then it also has this icon and this little icon, whoops, down here. And these are the Julian slices. So the one, this one, the lines are closer together. So that's your skinny Julian. So like a matchstick style cut. And then this one, the line, oops, sorry, down here, the lines are further apart, which is more like your French fry cut. So it's also a Julian, but a French fry cut. And again, skinny or fat Julian, and then one to eight. What I say to really to kind of get started with it is go to the fat Julian if you want like French fries. So you're going to turn it to the fat Julian. And then you're also going to go to the eight. You'll see there's like a little grid mark there. And that gives you like perfect square. And we're going to do that for carrots tonight. So you're going to see carrot fries, but that would be like your French fry setting. And then if you want like skinny julienne, you go to the skinny julienne. And then the good place to start is at the four. You can see there's another grid mark down there. And that gives you like a nice, perfect little, you know, skinny, uh, like a matchstick style cut. So that's kind of a good way to start. And then from there, you can just kind of play with it. So we're going to start, well, since I have it set, on the skinny julian, we're going to do our, um, normally you would do a potato and I'm oh, sorry, I don't want skinny julian, I want fat julian. Hold on. <laughs> French fry. Again. There we go. Okay. Um, so normally like potatoes and you can do regular potatoes, sweet potatoes, doesn't matter. Um, you're going to get perfect French fry cut, but I'm going to do carrots because this is my new way 
So again, you pump the handle. When you start to get close to the blade, as I'm about to do, you're gonna use this little food guard, okay? Because you don't wanna put your fingers in there because that's when you're gonna get cut. And just like that, I have carrots cut. Now my dogs know that sound and they just came right. <laughs> oh, they're gonna feed me carrots. Anyway, so you can see again, now the carrot's smaller than a potato, but you get this nice, perfect square. And, you know, again, think about a potato, you know, there's your, there's your French fry cut. So now instead of doing baby carrots, because I don't, again, fresh is best. I don't like baby carrots because they have some kind of weird preservative on them. I think they taste funny. I don't like to buy baby carrots, but I do like to do these because this is, I mean, look at this. This is like the perfect size for dipping and, and eating. So that's my new way to do my baby carrots. And then, and that's so yummy. I had to have a bite. <laughs> and then we're going to slice our, our cucumber. And this is where you can kind of play, like how thin or thick do you want it? We're going to start with a three. I want them kind of thin. So this is going to be sliced. And again, you can see just pump this handle like so. And you just get perfect slices. And again, you can determine. So that's a three. So we're on the thinner side if you wanted it thicker. But look at this, like perfect little dipper chips. But yeah, just they're so amazing. See that it is truly amazing. So just so you can see the difference, I'm going to do a couple on a one just so you can see how thin. Look at those. Look at that. <laughs> like if you're doing like homemade um, potato chips or something, you know, you could just slice them super thin, fry them up. They're going to be great. And then if you wanted to do something thicker, like if I was to make like a scalloped potatoes or something, I, I want my potato to be a little bit heartier. I'm going to do a thicker cut. So that's the thickest cut. So just so you can see the difference. Here's your one. Here's your three. And here's your eight. So look at the yeah. difference on that. And no matter what slice you're doing, every slice is going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to turn that back to the three because I thought the three was pretty good for what we're doing tonight. So again, use the food guard when you get close. And there, perfect. And look at how fast that was. And they're all sliced the same. So if this was something you were going to cook, like let's say you were slicing up zucchini or potatoes or something to cook, when they are all sliced the same, they're going to cook the same. And they're going to cook at the same you know time and temperature as opposed to... Um, if you were doing, you know, if you're doing it by hand and you're getting all different kinds of cuts, some fat, some skinny, it doesn't cook right. So, so here you go. Ta-da! So we have some deviled eggs, we have our zucchini, we have a dip. I mean, I'm sorry, we have cucumber, we have carrots, and we have a little bit of dip. So think about, again, you're going to a party. How quick and easy is this to take with you? And look at, it did not take me any time whatsoever, right? I mean, less than 30 minutes yeah. and I'm talking as we go. If I wasn't talking, it would have been a whole lot faster. But also to think about if this was in your refrigerator, would you not be more likely to grab a healthy snack versus <laughs> potato chips or candy or whatever your go-to is? So just because it is ready and it is there. So the ice packs are great for if you're you know out and about not having it refrigerated, but if you're going to keep it in the refrigerator, you don't even need the ice packs. You can just use the inserts and, and keep it in your refrigerator. But um you know, ice packs are there if you need them. So, and they really truly do keep your food cold for four to six hours. So it is amazing. Even if, you know, again, you're outside. Now, if it's in the bright sunshine, you're probably more at the four hour side of things. But um, if I've had them in my house, like, you know, I use these year round. So like if it's, you know, Christmas party or Easter brunch or whatever, and we have food out all day long, um, I always put my food in here because I want it to stay, um, to know that it's going to stay cold. Because number one, it's going to taste better, but I also don't want anybody <laughs> to get sick because the food wasn't at the right temperature. So, so that is what I have for you guys tonight. Um, Brenda, do you have any questions or anything you want to add on any tools that I've showed? Cause I know you probably have some of these. Uh, I can't think of anything right now, except I love that, that particular thing. The, <laughs> what the rapid we call prep mandolin? Well, I haven't tried the, the thing, the container. Oh, the cool and serve tray. The yeah. Cool and serve. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do too. It's so beautiful. So, and, and I've used cool. mine a lot. I've had it for quite a few years and I use it a lot. 
Yeah. And I just, and I don't know if you do the same, I just keep the ice packs in my freezer so that whenever I need to go, I get, if I have to think ahead, I probably won't, you know, I would never remember right. to freeze it in time, but <laughs> I just keep them in my freezer. And that way, when I'm ready to go, I was like, pull it out, ready to go. But I've also use these ice packs. Like um, if I'm going to the grocery store, you know, you have those freezer bags, but I'll throw like mm -hmm. an ice pack in there to keep food extra cold or, you know, whatever, if I'm not going to be coming mm -hmm. right home. Um, so you can just use them in a, you know, regular cooler or a thermos bag or whatever as well too. So you have a lot of uses for them. Yeah. I like that. Good. Good. Well, <laughs> thank you, Brenda, for joining. Um, thank you. Anybody You're else welcome. who's watching the replay? Um, again, if anybody has any other questions or needs more of an explanation or anything from me, certainly make a comment below and I'd be more than happy to um, answer any questions, but um, I'm going to eat. This is my dinner tonight <laughs> <laughs> and I am looking forward to it because these are like all my favorite things. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I well, love good. deviled eggs. So yeah, you got it's it. Well, so have a nice handy. night, Brenda. I appreciate you joining and everybody else. Happy cooking. Of course. Thank you. You got it. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.